but first I'd like to start with some introductions. So we'll start over here. And I think everybody's met Sheila, but this is Sheila Lively, uh, Wisteria Place General Manager. Oh, there's a name we know. <laughs> Welcome. And over here we have Marlies. We just call her Mari for short, because I get tangled on the L and the B <laughs> and the R. I just can't do that. If it was Japanese, Mari, Mari chan. Mari san, I like to call her that. And Mari is our head concierge, so she is your go to person. As soon as you sign your lease, I introduce you to Mari and she takes care of you. She loves taking care of everybody in this building. And she is your person to talk to with anything to do with moving forward after you sign your lease. I welcome you to come in and sign your lease, and then I leave, leave you in the very good hands of Mari. Next to Mari is Aviv. Aviv, say hello. Hello, hi, everyone. <laughs> Aviv is our maintenance manager here. Couldn't run the place without a good maintenance manager, so we're very lucky. When things go wrong, we're going to talk to Aviv. If you need help in your suite, we're going to talk to Aviv. He'll be able to assist. And anything to do with keys, and we'll get him to give more information in a wee bit. To the other side of the table at the front, we have Daniel Chen. Uh, Daniel is our director of hospitality. Uh, Daniel takes care of everything to do within the kitchen and the housekeeping side of things. Mm -hmm. So he'll tell us more about that as we go along too. And next to him is Chef, Chef Mike, Mike Park. Hello. Happy to have Mike on board. He's in charge of the kitchen and we're just thrilled to have him on board as well. So that's who we are. You may have met some of us in the past. Um, I think I know most everybody on there that I can see. So this is your time to ask us questions. Oh, we know Rick. Hi, Rick. We just saw Rick's Sorry. face. Hi, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> so that's great. If you have questions, please open them up and uh, let's see if we can answer any questions. We don't get in the same room very much together. This is a great chance to, to open up the conversation. Try to make it broad instead of, you know, where's my parking? Let's make it broad questions. We can deal with the, the nitty gritty ones off channel, but if you have sort of more broader ones, let's ask. Anybody ready? But my question is, if I can't live with the services in Wisteria, and I need to move to long-term care facility because you don't provide this many hours a day care. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Or maybe not now, maybe later, uh, what options and how much it would cost? Or you probably know much more how it is now than I used to knew. Thank you very much. So Judy, I'll speak on behalf of the team. So we are independent living, which means for everybody moving into our community, they have to be able to self-direct their care. So that means if there's an emergency, they can hit their pendant, they can escape the building, they know how to feed themselves. Now, some people as they move in, future down the road, they may have some, um, you know, as a support. They may not be able to, uh, themselves in certain areas because they have mobility issues and they can't bend down. For example, we have Provita. So Provita can come in and provide some services to help support you. That doesn't mean that you can't in an emergency hit your pendant. You can't self make, make a decision on your own. So as people transition, we do have other optimal livings that do have complex care in BC. We have six other buildings. Otherwise, we would help support you. So IE, if someone was just to say fall and break their hip, that there we have Provita. We would we wouldn't put anybody on an exit plan because we know if someone can rehabilitate and move forward, then you would get Provita to come in. 
there's an echo here, sorry. Um, you, we have Provita. They would be able, you would just have to have care in suite while you're rehabilitating, right? So, but if it's more complex, we would help you transition out. We would provide um, other communities that can support your needs. So we do have a director, uh, regional director of care for Optima that would start uh, supporting you on what that looks like to move to another building. Hopefully you can stay within Optima, but if not, we would look at other um, buildings to support you. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. I know I'm looking much to the future, Absolutely. but one more question. So now what existing now here and there is the long-term care insurances. Right, you can buy insurance for the future. And once you start the claim, they will pay you back some money. So have you any knowledge or ideas if that would be something to consider or uh, because you cannot provide the care or I don't have enough money or whatever to get and look into this long-term care insurances now or soon? So for you, I would uh, I'd get you in contact with our Senior Regional Director of Operations, Marjorie. Marjorie uh, has a lot of knowledge. She's worked with BCSLA, a lot of senior homes, different companies, aged care, so forth. So we can get you that information and get, get some support for you in that. Um, for us, our building, Long term, we unfortunately we can't have long term care, so we don't have that information at hand here just because, based on our licensing, and because we can't recommend that because we're not designated, you know, care directors. Um, but in, in the long term, our building can eventually one day facilitate assisted or long term care, like all the doors on different floors, our second floor. Um, Space can be, some spaces can be turned into a kitchen, but that's something long-term and that's something we haven't considered. Um, right now we're fully independent, but this building 20, 30 years from now, if it wanted to go to assisted or long-term, it has the capability of doing that with the high tech uh, innovations that we have in place right now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. So again, my name is Daniel. I'm the director of hospitality. I'm looking, I'm overseeing all of housekeeping and supporting chef in the kitchen and in the dining room. Um, so we'll be having three, we'll have our three meals a day with breakfast beginning at 8 a.m. right now, lunch at 12 and dinner at five. So we'll see how those times go um, with, um, so we'll have our four, with, our, with our continental breakfast at 12. Um, and then with uh, with housekeeping, we're looking to do uh, come and see coming coming to see you uh, once once a week to do a, a nice light clean of your suites um, at the preferred uh, day and, day and time of your choice during the weekdays Monday through Friday. So if you if you see me around, just stop me. If you have any questions regarding the, the kitchen, the menu, uh, the dining room, or even your housekeeping needs, just feel free to let me know, and I'd be happy to sit down with you and then we can work some we can um, see how I can help. Anyway, okay. We're looking forward to meeting all of you officially and um, seeing you in person soon. Thank you. Hey, hey Daniel. Chef, we'd love to hear from you. What's happening in your world? Hi, yeah, I'm Chef Mike. Um, I'm responsible for the kitchen. So if you have any question about the food, just come to see me. Oh, I see you. Uh, I'm always in the kitchen, so easy to find. So, yeah, welcome to this area. Thank you. I think most of you know me. My name's Anne. Um, love, nice seeing so many great faces and names on there that we recognize. Uh, yes, we are. You know, everybody, when they see me, they go, oh, you're so busy. Yes, we're very busy getting ready to welcome you home. And uh, one of the things I am working on right now that many of you might find trivial is the I favorites can. form. The favorites form that, is, that I've been sending out 
is so important. Number one important thing is that's where you've listed any allergies or any food information that we really need to know. So I'm taking that information and I'm passing that on to Daniel and Chef so that they know those most important things of information. The other points that are so key for me is the things that you like to do for hobbies. As you know, I am going to be turning into your recreation manager very soon. And so I'm going to be busy planning your schedule. What kind of activities am I going to run for you? What kind of outings are we going to do on our bus? Uh, I know what I like, but I better, I need to know what you like too. So please fill out those documents um, in any manner that you can. I really appreciate it. The other thing that's wonderful for us to know is a little bit about who you are. I have found out so many incredible stories about the people that I've been reading about. Uh, we have a, it is a I'm looking to see if here, we have an ex professional baseball player moving in with us. We have a pilot move with us. We have many people in the healthcare and nursing field moving in with us. We have incredible crafting and artists moving in with us. So the wealth of knowledge that you bring to this community is heartwarming for all of us. And we want to know, and we want to know your stories and we want to celebrate your stories. So those uh, favorite swarms, people like Michael Krieger. <laughs> I haven't got yours yet. <laughs> and I see them here quite frequently. So next time I see you, I'm going to be asking. Your lovely wife, I got her, but I don't think I have Michael. <laughs> Sorry for the shout out, but I just saw your name up there. So please never, don't underestimate those. Even a little bit of information would be wonderful. So that's what I'm working on right now, as well as when you all safely moved into your building as soon as you can. Off to Sheila. Hi everybody, once again, Sheila, General Manager here. So for me, operationally, what I'm doing is I'm just really supporting the team here. Right from yesterday, it was quite fun actually. Um, and we got to do her procurement and um, really, you know, the equipment that's coming into this building from a piano to a shuffleboard yeah. to a ping pong table, to a pool table, to a ball, watchy balls, watchy balls to, for outside um, is wonderful. So, and in the dining room, you know, chefs already created the menu. Uh, it's amazing. Daniel, it's going to be amazing. Daniel had training yesterday and, you know, he, you take your order, you sit down, he sees your, he, he, he sees your face. He already knows that you're allergic to peanuts goes to chef, chef is preparing the food right away. So it's not having like a buffet style. It's hot, it's it's cooked, it's, it's right there. It's great service. So, you know, all the operational stuff um, I'm looking at, you know, with the V, making sure the uh, doors, all your doors work. Uh, we still have a, a, a little bit of deficiencies we're working on. What we're noticing as the building shifts some things tweak a little bit and we have to kind of go back, um, but that's normal with the new building. Um, Mari's creating your resident journey. What does that look like for you when you, seven days prior, you know, reaching out to you and then two days prior, one day prior, when you arrive that day, what does that look like for you to the seventh day to the 14th day? So behind the scenes, operationally, how as people move in, how are we gonna all support you? with all the needs uh, to make your home special um, in your suite. So that's my job is just to kind of help support everybody to get to do their roles and what they need done. And just really, uh, we're moving forward. Everything's going great. Uh, the building is in amazing shape. A landscaping in the courtyard's done. Um, all the rooms are done. We're just waiting on a little bit more furniture <laughs> Excuse me. to come into the building. but. We're just so excited. Um, I'm very excited. Uh, we have a wonderful team here that we've been working early mornings, late nights. We're getting ready and we're just perfect. Hi, okay. hi everyone. I'm Mari, as you know. I can see and met uh, pretty much all of them. Um, if you need any, uh, any help, any support, I'm here for you. And uh, in a week before you're prior to move, 
and you will be, I will be calling each of you to see how far have you been doing with your moving, if you need any support, support for us, and explain to you how your first day journey will be, and that I'm here for you to, to support you, and I welcome you home. Hello, I'm, I'm Aviv. How everyone and uh, you can all of you can have uh, direct access to me if uh, anything with your suite, uh, any concern. I'll also be responsible for the life and safety for everyone, including the employee and the resident. We have. Thank you. Uh, so we, we really want to have, and I see the difference between this and other companies that we're very young, we're very agile, we're different. We want to make a difference in, in everybody's experience here. You'll have access to me anytime by phone, email, or in person that I'll be around. We'll try to solve uh, any concern immediately. And um, you know, it's a new building um, with um, the state of the art facility, including heating, cooling, and system. And we have everything at really the, the top of the, the game about this. And we welcome you all here. Are you? Yeah. Can you have, yes. Can we wait Hello. You? Hi. Can you can you, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can't see you, but we can hear you. I'm in my pajamas, so you're not going to see me. <laughs> uh, oh, but I'm here. Your family. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I just I have a few little logistical questions. Um, so one of them is uh, I just I just heard something about heating and cooling. Um, is there actual air conditioning in the building? The building there is air conditioning, uh, but not always it's going into the individual suites. I see. Okay. So it's different from this, but the main areas are as heating and cooling. Yes. Okay. So if, if a resident wished to get um, a, a compact air conditioner in their suite, they could do that. Portable. Portable. First, about the. Uh, regular what we call portable AC we have to see for the specific suite and the requirements there's a procedure yeah. and you can contact us and, uh, and the team about this we're still working out on exactly the procedure about this uh, and it's depend really depend where you are in the location in the building some you know depend where the sun and the, the other characteristic going some places are more hot or cold during during the year and, okay. But but eventually we'll make sure that uh, everybody gets uh, a proper uh, uh, heating and cooling in their suite. So we work. We're still working to figure out exactly the procedure about this, but we are aware. Of okay. Great. Um, thank you. Well, the other question I I had was um, uh, steel stud or wood stud construction. Just thinking for hanging pictures and mounting things on the wall. We are all uh, uh, technically um, wood wood stud on the on, on the on the walls. If any issue, we'll try to support, and um, you can definitely contact us about this, as uh, we want to really keep the integrity of uh, the walls and the building. But it is uh, wood wood frame. Okay, great. Thanks, Mel. Now, Thank I'm you. I'm going to let you know for everybody. So in your suites, everybody, you have three thermostats, one in the bathroom, one in the bedroom, and one in the living room. So you can control that. So basically, when Aviva is saying it's uh, heating, cooling, it's an air intake. The air comes in, it cools, or it heats into your suite. The building can withstand, based on building codes, a heat wave. So we had a heat wave here, the HVAC went on and we were actually shivering. Um, the so it is very, it very can good. get very cool in here, okay? Um, so yeah, you control your thermostat in your room if you want it really hot or if you want it really cool in your suites. Oh, 
Oh, I see Naomi and I think Michael had his hand up. So we'll talk, we'll do Naomi's question, then we'll come back to hands up. Okay, so Naomi's question is, is there support for moving in, moving furniture around once the residents are in? I mean, technically we, we will support as much as we can. Yes, yes, yes. So we will support the, with everything. Okay, um, I wanted to uh, just get clarification on the, the light housekeeping. So that would, uh, would that be vacuuming and uh, changing the bed linens? Uh, so light, light housekeeping would involve, uh, we would dust all of the, the horizontal and vertical surfaces, um, do a deep clean of, um, of the washroom, the living room, and um, just the vacuum and mop of the living room, bedroom, and the bathroom as well. So it's typically about 30, 30 minutes. Uh, so that does not include changing the bed linens? And we're going to do, and uh, yes, I'm changing the bed linens. Yes. Oh. And so we'll be providing every resident a uh, linen bag to put your clean linens in. So when we change them weekly, then what happens is the housekeeper will take the clean linen sheets, remove, put them on the bed, put the dirty sheets in the laundry, do the wash, and then put them back in the cupboard. So every time she's doing it, she knows where they are. She's not searching through all your stuff. So we just ask in the closet where she can, she knows how to identify it. So we'll be supplying those laundry bags for the linens for her to change the bed sheets. Absolutely. Will, will the menu be available in advance? Yes, uh, we um, technically publish rotation menu. And every six months, we change the main menu uh, for the four and three. Can you repeat that? Uh, I didn't quite catch it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, technically, we have a second menu is our rotating menu. Uh, every week uh, we're providing the uh, weekly menu on the uh, web page and everywhere. So you can have a look uh, yeah, in all the events. So it'll be on the TVs, Michael. The weekly calendar of menu will be on the TV plus daily. You'll see daily what you're eating uh, for lunch and dinner. And as chef cooks the lunch, I'll, They'll, uh, they'll take a picture of it and you'll actually see it on the screen, what you're having for lunch, the two choices. And when it comes to dinner time at 2.30, we'll have the dinner selection and you'll, you'll see it on the TV, so you'll know. So does that mean that we can video and watch him while he's cooking so we can learn how to cook as well? Uh, yeah. No, we're not gonna go back to that extent, but yeah. Uh, We'll just take a picture and, uh, and I'll get uploaded so everyone knows what uh, what we're doing. Same with recreation, calendar of events. Uh, we'll be putting on the salon services. Stephanie, the salon will be in September 1st to set up the salon. Uh, we'll have manicure, pedicure in the salon. We will be having a uh, podiatrist. Uh, we're just getting that set up. We are getting set up for Vita, so some people they may just need, uh, um, you know, you may need a little bit of care. We have Provita coming. Uh, um, let's see. So, so this is great. Uh, we had our training yesterday. And what medical pharmacies is Dr. Gabriel? He's in Burnaby, but you can have your prescription door to door. He will be here monthly. Um, and so from your physician to uh, Dr. Gabriel at the pharmacy, you can call Dr. Gabriel, he can call your physician and get your pharmacy refilled. We have a fax machine here, we have a secure storing area. So just say your medication comes in and you're out for a walk, uh, it gets stored in a proper storage area. We have an insulin fridge. Um, so yeah, so that's a great service door to door. Um, and 24 hours hotline for medical pharmacies as well to support you. So if you run out of your medication, 
if you put the call in before one, I'll be here by five. So just uh, a great feature as well. So for all those that do have medication, um, you may want to consider, um, and then monthly he'll come in and do a present, <laughs> excuse me, he'll do a presentation as well. Um, I see a question yes, about, about the, the door. The entry door yeah. entrance are still constructed. No, they are not still constructed. The wood frame and wood door with fire rating as per specs and uh, they were supposed to be. There are fire door dividers between different areas of the building. They will be deployed only in a, in a case of emergency or fire or even a fire drill. So just to be aware of this. And, but they yeah, are not the uh, construction. Uh, I think Judy has a hand up as well. Judy, go ahead. Okay, I have just a quick question and it is for the chef. Somewhere now I heard that there will be a buffet style serving. Buffet style serving. Is that what uh, it will be? It's not a buffet it's style. Uh, we individually serving it's the order. dish. Hmm? Sorry, we, it's hard to hear you. Can you speak up, please? Uh, we individually serving the dish. It'll be a, a, a plate service, Judy. It's a plate service without. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but. I have to go to a buffet and pick my own food? No. 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 Uh, in the morning, the breakfast, yeah. yes. first, yes. For breakfast, yes. Lunch, dinner, no. Breakfast, yes. <laughs> Does that make sense, Judy? No. Sorry. Does that make sense? So breakfast will be, I've been calling it grab and go. Mm -hmm. So breakfast. Breakfast will be a bit more casual and won't be a sit down service, but lunch and dinner will be sit down service to the table. Okay, Is somebody that, will bring a tray, right? Or they'll bring a tray. plate or something. Okay. Breakfast, you, you have the option of being able to take it back to your room or take it to the courtyard and enjoy it somewhere else or in the yeah. dining room as well. Does that make sense? Uh, starting to. <laughs> starting to. That would be something you take the individual items uh, in, a, in a bag or um, I'm trying to read what those questions are, but not take the dishes back to your room, but then you could enjoy it on your, on your deck or your patio. Thank you. And then the other question is you mentioned, of course, the showers are different. They don't have any bathtubs. So there will be some kind of curtains I could purchase, which will be like rounded. So the water will not be going on the bottom out from the shower area. Okay, so the showers have been tested. We've had people try the showers and Sheila for one tried the showers and the water stays within the shower cabinet. Um, we just have at the moment regular shower curtains on those units. But there are shower curtains that have a little bit of a lip on the bottom that we will be purchasing and they will be for sale in our tuck shop. So our virtual tuck shop will be items that many residents might need and we'll have them available for, for you for purchase. And we will be able to put that um, price or the, the, the purchase on your, on your bill, on your monthly rental bill. So Thank you. Bring, bring a shower curtain. Bring, shower. Have one. bring one if you have one. If yeah. it's not going to work, come and see us and we will have some for purchase. So park and bring a shower curtain. Thank you. Thank you. Now who, there's another question there. Yes, I do. Awesome. I, Hi, Brian. Hi. Hi. I have a, a piano. It's a, a electronic piano. And um, I would gladly donate it to the uh, building. Oh, and, uh, but it's, the, there's just a few little clicks in it. And if somebody knows somebody who lo knows how to 
fix those, it will be a beautiful piano. Thanks, Fern. I appreciate that. That's very generous. Can I call you later on that? Sure. I'll call you. Thanks, Fern. Okay. okay. Thank you. We're talking about donations. I, I like donations. The, the one, the few things that I am looking for, if you are happen to be downsizing, I don't know who might be downsizing, but I am looking, <laughs> I'm looking for a few china teacups. I do have how many more? 20. I have 20, and I'd like to have enough for the whole um, the whole group. So for high tea. So I am looking for china teacups. I am looking for puzzles without missing pieces, because that really, I don't like it when there's missing pieces, but I'd love donations of puzzles. Um, I, I hate to say the word books because I, I don't want to be inundated with books, but if you have a special book that might work on our bookshelf, I will not take collections of books, but I will take a few here and there. So uh, send me an email. Don't, please don't phone me. Please don't phone me. My phone never stops. <laughs> Send me an email and we'll talk books. Um, what else am I looking for? Anything else that we're looking for? Yeah, then games. If you have favorite games, I'm having a problem with Mahjong. Not, not me personally, but I need to figure out how, what I need to have a really good Mahjong table. So anybody that is really familiar with Mahjong, please let me know because I have a games area and I just, I know I need like a table that has a lip on it so that the tiles don't fall off. I haven't really had much luck finding that. So I'm, I'm reaching out to you for help on the Mahjong area. Um, I am getting a ping pong table. I think there's a lot of folks that like ping pong. I, I can't see you all, but I think there's some interest in ping pong. Bob, Bob's gonna be my ping pong coach, right, Bob? Bob Kong. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bob, I just nominated you as ping pong coach. Uh, table tennis, I have to call it table tennis. So pool table, table tennis, uh, shuffleboard, things like that are on the, on the works. So that's why those favorite forms are really important to fill out because I go through them with a fine tooth comb and I know who likes black licorice and I know who likes dark chocolate and I know who likes Osembe crackers and uh, it's really important. So thank you. Thank you for doing your homework. And if you haven't already, I will be finding you and what you do right. <laughs> thank you. And just I'll, I'll talk a little bit about re-signing. So when you guys are re-signing, um, we need about an hour and an hour and a half. So if you do have more questions, please come. Um, when it comes to lease signing, we actually really do need the favorites at that time. Um, just because then Mari is planning, we're putting you into our system, we're building your profile. So the day you move in, Chef already knows you're allergic. Um, you know, if you need a shower curtain, we're documenting it. So anything you need, um, at that time of lease signing, um, you know, we're picking your stall, stuff like that. So if you can come prepared, you know, at lease signing, um, your tenant insurance. Um, we also need your um, registration for your vehicle. Um, just, I um, yeah, so any questions that you may have at lease signing, um, when you come to lease signing too, we'll give you the medical pharmacies package. You can have a look at it see if it fits for you, if you want to have that service. Um, also, too, we'll be having it with medical pharmacies in correlation with white gloves, too, so it'll be great. Eventually, um, you know, you'll be able to do blood work on site in, the, in one of the family rooms. So just anything um, that you feel that you need, just let us know. If you have any questions in advance for lease signing, feel free to reach out to me. Um, but yeah, we do need to go over the lease and does send out the lease prior to, so you can have a read. About so one week prior. Yeah, one week prior, you yeah. will get an email from Anne letting letting you review the lease uh, document. So if you have any questions, please come prepare, because um, then that can uh, speed up the process. And, or if you have questions, it just makes it easier. Um, but we do set an hour and a half uh, timeline for you. It's your time to go over the lease. And if you have any specific questions. Question 
because Fairly I haven't been involved in um, the lease signing so far. What is the process? And I this question has been asked to me is what is the process for assigning parking? Can you can you talk about that? Thanks. Yeah, so parking as uh as you come in to sign your lease, we actually have a map of the parking stall. We actually bring you out to the parking garage area and then you pick your stall, it goes on to your lease. And then you are set. So, <laughs> so as people, and then what's going to happen is uh, in the next like two weeks, Mari will create your name, laminate it on a piece of paper, and then that will go on the wall. So then everyone knows that's your stall and that's for you, for you to park in. If there's any guests or visitors, they park on the other side. They don't park on the residential side. We do have, it's very important. We already have four wheelchair accessible spots um, we, that have been identified. So we had to mandate one for sure, um, just with bylaw, but now we actually have four permits. So if you do have a permit, we need to know right away because um, we need to get you close to the building to have easy access for mobility. So if you're one of those people, please reach out to Anne or myself. We need to know that right away if you do have a parking uh, permit for mobility for handicapped, please. While we're on that subject, could you update us on storage? Because it's a question that does come across my desk a lot, and I'm not really in that loop. Is there anything you can update us yeah. on? So with storage, uh, we are looking at to take three parking stalls um, to put uh, build fencing gated um, storage. So it will come, it's not as easy because we are moving three stalls, it does become a city permit. We do have lots of parking in the garage. That's not a concern, but because we are removing three stalls, it just requires some city permits. So it's not gonna be done right away. So I recommend if you already have stuff in storage, keep it in storage, do not bring it to the building because we have nowhere to put anything. So at this time, everything will have to remain in your suite. The storage areas though are gonna be not that big. Um, it's going to be cut like three or four boxes can fit in the storage. Um, so just keep that in mind um, for the storage area. Hi, I can help here. Uh, Lisa has a question and saying is 1.5 hours set aside for lease signing. Is this combined with the suite viewing? So we have 1.5 hours for suite viewing to do measurements and lease signing? No, so the 1.5 hours is lease signing. I'll be honest with you, it's 35 pages. So we have to kind of have a clear understanding of what you're signing. It's not just a regular typical lease because there's a lot of moving parts. We have to talk um, about the resident council, the food committee, your, your rights and your responsibilities living in the building, our, our values of what we have to do for you in our building. So it's a, bit, a little bit more complex. Afterwards, you're more than welcome to go to your suite and, and take an hour or two hours. So we'll escort you up to your suite after lease signing for you to take measurement. And then the next question is, can the TVs be mounted on the wall? Do it, do you do it, or do we have recommendations from handyman or women? So, excuse me, dry cough here with asthma. Um, so TVs can be mounted. My recommendation is we have a Viva maintenance manager for the first month. Our bus driver um, is the handyman. So he will be supporting a beef and we, will, we can support you putting it into the wall. My recommendation is if you have pictures, you know what you're doing great. If you're not sure, then we can do it for you. So just remember, once you sign the lease, we do need the tenant insurance for your commencement date of moving before anything will go up on the walls, just for liability, but we can definitely support you. A matter of them making an appointment. Is that the best thing for them to make an appointment through Mari? Yeah. Is that sort of where we're going? Yeah. So 
if you do yeah, need to actually what we have so what we actually have is anytime you guys have a request uh what we call it is a maintenance tracker so you would call mari saying i have i've moved in so we're going to try and get pictures up that day um for you but if it it may be a couple of days um, for the pictures just because we have to educate you on the telephone system on the cable system on your lifeline on the emergency procedures so that's kind of your first day so if there's time we'll definitely do it that day if there's not Aviv will let you know what day he's coming into your suite and if that's okay with you then he'll put those pictures up so we call it a maintenance uh, tracker so any request you have, it goes into the maintenance tracker and based on priority, he will definitely accommodate and get back to you when he can facilitate that. So we have another question. Um, are we suggested to purchase tenant insurance on our own? So we, yeah. So there's one or two going. options. Oh, sorry, there's more. Okay. No, 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 that was it. That was it. Okay, yeah. thank you. So tenant insurance, you can either get it on your own. You do need a million dollar liability and then you would insure your contents. So whatever your content value is. We do have a company, we deal with Marsh. We will have tenant insurance available for you. $14 a month, a million dollar liability and 30,000 content. If it's more than that, my recommendation then is you would go on your own if you have more. So we have a set fee of $14 per month. So there's a question, uh, any cost to having the maintenance person mount the TV on the wall? And also if a resident is feeling unwell, will is there a cost involved in having the food delivered to their room so the first one the cost to the maintenance person no we are here for you we are here to move you into your suite we're not here to nickel and dime you now if it's a valuable and it's a painting and you know that value is ten thousand dollars then we would have a discussion with you because we want to make sure for liability purposes so depending on what we're putting on the wall, if it's something that we can facilitate, great. But as the maintenance manager, if something is very valuable, you may have to step away from it and we may have to advise you with a recommendation to get it installed. So just, it really depends on what you need installed, but definitely we're here to support you uh, with maintenance. So for males, there are a couple of options. So we have, you can order your meal, you can take it to go and it's a go bag. So to say for dinner, you don't want your meal. If we do delivery charge, there is a $5 delivery charge for trace service. Yeah, I think that's all the questions that are in chat. Did anybody else have? Yes. Can we have extra shelving installed in our bedroom closets? Yes, you can. Um, however, if we you can, if you do it yourself, um, it has to go back. There just can't be damage. So we talk about wear and tear. So yes, you can install extra shelving in your bedroom. But when you move out, we just have to make sure that we can put it back to the original state that it was in. And if that's easy and there's not big holes or anything like that, then there will be no charge. But yes, you can definitely install um, extra shelving in your bedroom to accommodate your uh, wardrobe. So you'd recommend a standalone shelving unit then? Yeah, I would recommend that. I do know some people are coming with professionals to do a full walk-in closet. That can be done, but when you move out, that has to be taken out. So we actually, we cannot do that. Um, based on our fire regulations in our grade, we don't put carpet down. If you want to put a carpet down, you can, but it cannot be installed. It could just be a rug laid into the suite, but a full carpet, we will not we can't change the aesthetics of the building. Okay, can I talk? So can you please expand on the 
TV. So when I bring my own TV into the unit, all I have to do is plug it into the electrical outlet, or do I have to do more to get all the programs? So that's a be maintenance. So when you go into your suite, the TV comes on, you bring your TV, he plugs it in, he installs the cable box, and it's automatically ready to go. And he shows you how to re, uh, learn the remote. So when you're in your suite, it'll either be Daniel or Aviv, um, <coughs> or it could be me. Um, and what we do is we show you how to use your TV remote. Um, we show you how to connect to Wi-Fi. We show you your lifeline, your pendant, how, how it works. We show you how your locks work on the door, the deadbolt. And we also show you the thermostat on how to regulate. And we show you how to open and close the, uh, how to lock the balcony door because there's a secured lock and how to open your windows. So we show you all that um, on the first day in your suite. Well, we will see most of you very, very soon. And we look forward to it. Again, I'm gonna put a plug in to get those favorites forms into me. Oh, and yeah. Sheila has a question. Actually, I don't have a question. I actually have an answer to you. Oh, like so that. during lease signing, um, there's a little bit confusion with TELUS. So everybody needs to understand there's three components to TELUS. TELUS, we provide, provide you your landline. You cannot import it into our building to make it your landline. We need to be very clear on that. Our telephone system is connected to your safety pendant. If you're to fall in your room, you have a phone, there's a speaker on it, and we can then call, we can directly access the speaker in their room. So if you've fallen or you've hidden your pendant and it shows you're in your room, we can actually start to say, how are you? So there's no delay when you're in your room. Secondly, the intercom system outside. Eventually, when COVID is over, you can, someone can, your family member can come to the front door, key in your suite number, and then you can actually let them in by your phone. So it's very important. And then for TELUS, if you want, you can add distance charge packages, or if you make calls, it goes on to your account at the end of the month. If you want to top up with TV, which is TELUS as well, you can add extra channels for a charge. You would just call the support number. They already know where you're calling from, and you can do that. So that's why the first year we give you a landline, but that landline will always have to remain to that to that speed number. So when you move in, so there is a $20 fee for your landline, but that also gives you the um, the pendant system and also your Wi-Fi and your cable. So that's why you cannot import your TELUS phone because we have a package that includes Wi-Fi, cable and telephone line. Yeah, and we have, we have one more question about a TV from Judy Ann. Go ahead, Julianne. Where are you? Extra channels can be added for the charge. Is that the question? So. Yeah, so extra channels. So if you're going to have basic cable, extra channels can be added. You would call in your suite. You would call TELUS. There's a 1 800 support number. And you would just tell them you live at uh, Wisteria Place. You're in suite number and you want to add an extra channel uh, or a package. And once it's only once you move in. So the day you move in, you'll get your phone number. So my recommendation is don't cancel your personal phone until you moved in with us. Yeah, okay. I just asked if you could have more than one TV. Yeah, in your bedroom. So in the living room, the same table is on the opposite wall for the bedroom. So it'd be back, back to back. So yes. Okay. We've had some, uh, you know, our movers are coming in without masks on, and we do need to have the movers wearing masks, and we will still be COVID screening. Um, the other thing is, 
I, I know some of you have dropped by and I, I always look a little frazzled when you do. We are so, so busy right now trying to get things ready for you. Please, please. it's not that we don't want to see you. Of course we want to see you, but we want to see you. Wait, please make an appointment. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Please make an appointment to come visit us. We are training and preparing for you. So we, we really ask that you must make an appointment to come visit us. So that's why we're doing these uh, lease signing agreements. And then after that, you, we will take you up to your suite. You bring your measuring tape and do um, anything you want at that time. But please understand it's not, uh, it's not that we don't wanna see, we love seeing you, but we are just so incredibly busy trying to get ready for this, uh, this early move in. Uh, COVID safety, do you want to talk, because yeah. I keep taking my mask off, but do you want to talk about that as we yeah. finish off? So come, uh, come August 24th with our soft opening, all of us and everybody will have an L3 mask, okay? So we will all be wearing masks. Everyone right now on our team is COVID vaccinated, all of our team members. For now, what we understand is residents are moving in, everyone is vaccinated. So there's going to be two scenarios here. When everyone comes into the building, resident um, is fine, you can come and go. Um, in the common areas for the first month, at least for one month, we will all be wearing masks, even from residents in common areas. The only time you would take off your mask is when you're eating. For that the, the COVID regulation for assisted or independent family building. However, they can't just walk into the building. They still have to, we're going to and it has to, we still, for contact mapping and COVID tracking, we need to know who is coming in and out of the building. So, Family members can come in the building, but we have to limit how many family members coming to the building. So there will be a URL link, a Calendly link, or you can call Maribus to book that. So family members can just go online and they can book when they want to come in. And then we know who's in the building. For visitors at this time, Visitors will have to remain outside of the building and you can visit them outside um, in the landscape area in front of the building. So right now we do have a family room. So family members, if you are double vaccinated, you will be allowed to move freely within the building and be in the residence suite. If you are not vaccinated, we will allow you in the building you will wear an L3 mask, but you can only be in the family room that we're in now, visiting your loved one socially distanced. So that is the difference for us in our building. And that will start August 24. So like Anne said, we can't have people just coming in and out of the building um, because we need to track right from movers coming into the building. So from a Licensing is point of view, we can only have so many people in the building at once for also emergency and fire regulations. So that's why it's going to be key once families here or if you need to the first couple of days your family members moving in, you want to sleep over to make them feel comfortable, we'll make that exception. But you need to talk to Mari first at concierge. We'll actually provide you uh, on the week of the 20th all the emails for maintenance, for, for hospitality, for concierge. So you will get an intro email of who is doing what. You'll also get the COVID in Raidu as well. So everyone's in the know. So when Mari calls you for your move in, she will reiterate what the COVID rules are at that, that time. As we have movers and we have a lot of everybody, we will be wearing an L3 mask to keep us all safe. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. Um, we Thank do you have to wrap much. it up. Um, if you have more questions, feel free to send them to me. I will take, send them out to the appropriate people. Thank
Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Steph. Thank you, Mari. Thank you, Sheila. Thank Take you very much. over because the Wi Fi is not working. <laughs> and thanks so much for thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye bye now.